Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mindwalkers, a four to eight player deduction secret role identity game in which players are gonna go through two different phases. The day phase, in which they'll be drawing cards, playing cards, moving to different locations, and then of course the night phase, where players are going to take cards that are blank on the back, write on them, hand them to a player, and make them take a unique action they normally wouldn't make. It's basically like Resistance meets some type of like mind controlling style game, and where players are going to be taking on the role of magi attempting to corrupt or uh, benefit, benefit certain locations on the map. Certain ones are going to be sealed, they have to be removed, there's certain locations that you can do actions on, have continuous effects on, or perform some unique event, and it plays through five rounds. Day, night, day, night, day, night, and then finally the last phase is just the day phase, in which case you see if you've won. Uh, the uh, Fallen and the Council are the two main classes, and then there's a tertiary different set of classes. The Council attempts to get four energy onto the origin, Whereas the Fallen attempts to make sure that nobody wins the game. And then you have the Hunter, Hawk, and Populist have their own unique objectives. I'll explain how to set it up, how to play, and then finally our review for the game, Mindwalkers. It's on Kickstarter, link down below. To begin the game Mindwalkers, simply set out all eight locations. There are three different types, bronze, silver, and gold. The bronze and the gold ones are going to have a, a little specific seal on them to represent that you can't go there until you remove them. Each player is going to get a unique specific secret role, whether it be the Council of the Fallen, Hunter, Hawk, or Populist. Depending on the number of players in the game, it will tell you in the rule books what happens, but you'll shuffle them up and then deal one out to each player. Additionally, every single player is going to receive a unique character in the more advanced mode. You're going to be giving uh, each player their four specific Mindwalk cards, and then three cards from the Mindwalkers deck that they can utilize throughout the game. Each player is also going to get a unique pin for themselves. They can go ahead and write on the Mindwalk cards, and and everything else that's not used can be discarded. And finally, of course, the day counter, which will start on the day one phase, around one day phase, and it'll move across from day to night, day to night, all the way to the fifth phase where it hits day till finally the game is over. Once you've done that, give one player this card, which represents the starting player, and get rid of everything else you do not need in the game and begin. Playing the game is very simple. You're going to go ahead and look at your player reference card if you've decided to give one out if it's your first game, and you'll go ahead and go through the game alternating between day and night phases. During the day phase, if it's the first day, you do not do this, but every other day you're going to review any mind walks that you might have received, and uh, you'll have to basically do them if you can, right? There's a lot of rules between mind walking, which I'll explain in my review. Uh, then you'll draw two cards from the deck here. You'll draw these cards here. These cards are going to be either mana cards or some unique action type of card, which are called spells. Uh, you will then visit a location with your player icon, or these little meeples here. You can stay on the same location if you want, or you can move to a new one. Some of them are going to involve you doing something when you move to them, others will have a unique effect that lasts as long as you're there, and some of them you can do things like call a vote, or banish a player. After that, then you can play any number of cards from your hand. Most of the cards you're playing are going to be action cards. They're going to be like Surprise Witness or Energy Storm. Mana cards typically are going to be saved for when you do the Council phase during the Origin. After you have done uh, all the cards you want to play, or play all the cards you want to play, then you're going to go ahead and discard down to seven cards. Cards are only going to be counted towards these, not to your identity, or your character, or your mind walk cards. After that phase, everybody's going to be participating in that phase, you'll move on to the night phase, in which you're going to write down on your mind walk card a command, and then you're going to give out that command face down, uh, in order, from starting player to last player, and then you're going to pass it to a player, which they'll have to enact. And after that, uh, each player, when they start the next round, they'll have to look at that card and try and do what it says. Most of the time, you cannot do certain things and you can do certain things. It should only involve one action, like play this specific card here, vote this way during the session. You're not going to be able to let people see or show other people their roll cards or some specific things you cannot do and certain things you can do, but you can't combine them. You can't be like, well, you can't play this card here and that card here. It's only one specific thing that you're going to be able to likely do. Um, and in the rules, it kind of dictates how that works. And that's the basic idea of the game. Each of these locations does something unique, like taking the first player card, looking at a player's hand and taking up to two of their cards and then give them the same number in return. Over here at the Sanctum, you draw two cards from the deck and reveal them and all players will then, uh, reveal them to all players, then add them to your hand. Uh, pay two mana to do one of these things. The Cavern is going to say whenever a chamber vote is uh, declared, you may choose to raise or lower the passing threshold by one. Uh, the other one here is the Sanctum 
Sanctuary, all the players cannot target you with card effects, Bazaar, or Cor Court of Gaul Khan, and must pay one mana in order to give you Mind Walk cards, the ones that make you change what you want to do. Uh, the Court of Gaul Khan basically is going to be the one that you vote to banish a player, kind of removing them from the game, so to speak. And then the Origin is where you have a vote, where the person that moves there will select two other players. Those players are each going to play one mana card from their hand. Then you're going to shuffle those cards up along with the card that you put in and reveal. If there were four or more mana, it's going to pass, in which case you're going to put a token on the origin. And if there is something that happens like, uh, for instance, maybe it's a uh, minus one and then two, that's gonna be two minus one, which is going to be only one, that would be a fail. So you need to choose players that are gonna correctly want to push the origin, which is basically finding those council members. If you're the fallen, you're gonna be not doing any of that stuff. You're going to want to banish players, stop players from succeeding the council votes for the origin. You're going to want to muck up players' hands and all that. That kind of thing. There's unique different classes we'll talk about in the review that all want to do their own unique thing as well, but that's the basic idea of the game. Attempting to complete your secret hidden objective, utilize your character ability as well as any cards that you draw when you play them during the day phase, mind walk your opponents to make them change their actions and possibly change their votes or cards that they play during certain phases of the game, and hopefully succeed by the end of that fifth round during the day phase. Okay, night review. So Mindwalkers is a pretty straightforward trader deduction game, and it has a unique twist to it, which is basically the ability to mind walk, which is basically giving players commands to do an action they probably normally wouldn't want to do. The game is going to focus around players utilizing their classes and cards that they get uh, to the best of their abilities, as well as going to locations to try and complete their objective. Uh, the hunter, for instance, wants to reach the end of the fifth day with all fallen players banished, and at least one's council player remaining. So they're kind of working with the council by banishing the fallen, but at the end of the day they just want to win alone. The hawk, for instance, is going to reach the end of the fifth day with at least two energy tokens at the origin and an equal number of council and fallen players remaining. So you want to have one council, one fallen, and at least two energy on the origin. Uh, the populist here, this one here is after the least, at, after at least half the players rounded down are banished, including yourself, be directly involved in banishing somebody else. So if you can do so after that certain point by being part of the banishment you can win as well so people who are a little banish heavy on one end might be popularly po probably the populist and based on the number of players in the game maybe one or two or even all three of these would be included based on the number of players i believe um it's basically one of those things where uh there's gonna be a number of council players a uh, less number of fallen players and then usually one maybe two of these guys here council players are always trying to get the light at the origin. They want to cast votes. They want those votes to succeed. The fallen, all they want to do is reach the end of the day with nobody else completing an objective. Basically, the council not succeeding at the location of the origin or any of those three being able to do what they want to do. Similar to games like Shadow Hunters and The Resistance and then probably a lighter version of things like BSG and Dark Moon, this game presents some unique twists and turns. And we'll talk about um, the phases of gameplay. We'll talk about the night phase and I'll go into the quality of the game. So the day phase is the first phase you start with. You can have those three cards that you can utilize and they're going to do specific things. Most of them are going to be mana, which will be involved in voting for banishment as well as for the origin. Uh, then you're going to have things like energy storm where you can play when a chamber vote is declared and choose an additional participant for this vote, increasing the passing threshold by plus one. So you choose an extra player, but the threshold is only going to be plus one. So maybe do you have a plus two? I do have a plus two. Great. I'll play energy storm. Thusly, it does cost one more, but because you have two, it's going to help us. But they could be lying, because when you do the votes, you shuffle those cards up. Uh, surprise witnesses play during any chamber vote before the participants complete or combine their votes. Swap one of the votes with a card from your own hand. Maybe you don't trust somebody, you want to put a good card in, or maybe you know a player is good and you want to put a bad card in. And uh, they're all different. They all have unique twists and turns. Absorbing magic, play when another player casts a spell to negate it, but you have to pay two mana to do so. so sometimes mana is going to have uh, another use, whether it be cards in your hand, or maybe there's something on the field, like specifically the Council of Mercy, that you can choose to do. Additionally, when you get banished, you're going to be drawing less cards during your turn, and you're not going to be able to call a vote, but you can participate in one unless you get this Mercy of Shan Nas card, which lets you cost to activate one mana, and once a day you can pay three mana to prevent all... Um, prevent or reverse a banish. And if you own all three of these cards, you can instantly uh, have your team win. So there's also another victory condition in here. Generally speaking though, the game is going to end when either A, everyone is banished but one player and that team will win, or B, you complete your objective and your team wins, 
or C, the end of the game triggers with the last day phase on the fifth round, in which case the Fallen has won the game. The night phase. The night phase is pretty simple. You're going to basically write down on your card one thing, and then you're going to hand that thing to a player. Do the thing. That's basically what I wrote here. Um, and you're going to give it to any player that you want. Maybe you're going to have them, instead of voting for a plus one on the origin, make them go down a minus one. Or maybe you're going to actually have them go to the bazaar. Now, you can't have them go to the bazaar and have them choose what they do with that location. It's basically only doing, you can only do one thing with it. Uh, you're not going to be able to be like, uh, play this card here, play that card here, move to this location, and then vote this way. That's not how it works. So it's basically just like a single stolen action. And players are aren't allowed to say what they, well, I mean, I guess they probably could. I would suggest not even talking about the Mind Walk cards, but I guess in the game you can be social and be like, oh, that was a thing that I was forced to do, but maybe you weren't forced to do it. And you can blame other players based on what they're trying to tell you to do based on Mind Walking. So it kind of adds an extra little twist to it. We have played both ways in this game and both ways are valid and we're perfectly fine. Um, and of course, you're always kind of conniving and deceiving and trickery and uh, sometimes you're gonna help people. Sometimes you know somebody's on your turn, so you'll mind walk them to kind of convince them of what they should do on their turn. Like, you don't want to go to the origin and do a vote, but I promise you if you do, we'll succeed. And you're like, I don't, and then the guy's like, I don't know if I want to do that. Fine, take the card. Now that he has to do it, now we're going to succeed. Uh, so you can kind of twist your allies to your will as well. Um, and it works perfectly well. The components and quality of the game, you're going to be getting a ton of cards in the game. There's lots of artwork. I really enjoy all of the art in this game. I think the art is phenomenal. The graphic design is left for a little bit of wanting, but I do really, really dig the artwork and the stylization. I really wish the origin, the council, all these pieces of artwork filled up that whole entire card so it was a full art and just a minor text, maybe even not written exactly like this, but kind of uh, transparent kind of back here. Uh, the character cards are really well done as well. Kind of wish once again that it was more full art and there wasn't so much of that like boxed up type of text. Uh, the cards are high quality, they're thick, they're nice when you draw them and they feel good and of course they are legible, they're easy to read, you understand what 99% of these cards do upon drawing them. The markers and the dry erase board work pretty well as well. You'll take these things, you'll write on them, and then to erase them you can just, I don't know, have a piece of like a towel, a wet towel or whatever. I just use my thumb and it just gets rid of it pretty quickly, so those work well. Uh, of course, I'd like to see the tokens of higher quality, maybe even have minis on the board. I don't know if it's even really necessary, but you have these little meeples here. It could be a little bigger at least, or maybe wooden, I don't know. Uh, but everything works well. It's all put together well. The artwork is very nice. You feel like a magi moving around trying to come, basically it feels kind of like Star Wars, the original like sequels where you're like part of the council and you're trying to get people to vote different ways and there's like conniving and deceiving, but you're using the force on people. I don't know why I had that connection to the game, but it felt like you're kind of mind controlling people to do what you want, but you're also on the council trying to be political and have things play out the way you'd like them to play out. I love the fact that you can win in different ways in this game. It's not just about your objective, but they also can end based on cards that you draw in this deck here. There's cards that involve using mana, so it gives you a reason to say, I need my mana for this. I can't do the vote right now because this is even more important than that, and it could be a bluff. There's a lot of bluffing. There's a lot of confusion in the game as to what's going on. The mind-walking cards, ah, man. I love the premise, I love the idea, but there's a lot of questions surrounding them. What can I do? What can't I do? Is this okay? Uh, can I be kind of vague as long as they know what I'm saying? Or maybe they don't know what I'm saying. I've gotten cards in this game where I'm like, I have no idea what you want me to do. So you need to write this again. And then they write it again. I'm like, I still have no idea what you want me to do. And so I feel like the mind walking aspect is really good in premise, but hard to carry out because you as a designer or as a publisher, you can't guarantee that players are going to write down the exact terminology to make everybody else make sense of what they're trying to write out. Handwriting can be less legible than others, or explanatory explanations can be reduced to a very basic synapse of what they actually want, which makes things kind of confusion. But if you can get through the confusion and you have players that understand the game and know what they want to do and how they want to do it, I think even adding more rules and more restrictions to mind walking would help, as opposed to letting it be too vague, like just do whatever you want with an action or whatever. Then kind of condensing it to you can do one of these five things, or here's six different things you can do in different variations. I think that would work out better. The game length 
length works out well. It's quick, it's formulaic. You know exactly what you want to do when you want to do it. Most of these uh, specific locations have something that's unique and something that you'd like to do. Sometimes it's better to do one thing over another. Sometimes you need more cards to do things that you want to do. And there's a large variety of things that you can choose to do in the game. You never know who to trust or when to trust them or what to do in specific scenarios, which gives the game a lot of replayability and change. And what I'd like to see too is, of course, more tertiary classes, maybe even a third role, and even add additional players if possible. I know it gets kind of crazy because of the mind walking aspect to it, but I always like social deduction games to be as many as I can possibly hold at a table. And this one does a really great job of that. Everything overall is a fun game. This is an exciting experience. I love the unique twist to mind walking. It's something different, something unique and original, while adding some things that I do understand that make it kind of easy to comprehend as I play the game. Overall, a solid, fun little game, a small box that holds quite a lot of content. And if you are a deduction player who likes to manipulate players, specifically having them do what you want to do, not just by verbally, but also by writing it down and forcing them to, Mind Walkers is something I strongly suggest you take a look at. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mind Walkers. If you're interested in picking up, there's a link down below in the description. Kickstarter starts today, the day of this video, and there's a link down below where you can pick that up. My website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. You can go ahead and check all that out on unfilteredgamer.com. Uh, we'll have new reviews up almost every other day or whatever. Ryan's been punching them out pretty quickly. Our Instagram's got reviews on it as well. We're doing ads. We do a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PDT now. Callie said it's not PST anymore. It's not standard anymore. It's D, whatever that is, Pacific Daylight time? I don't know. Um, and of course, if you want, you watch this video all the way through, it would greatly, greatly make me appreciate you even more if you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button, go ahead and like this video, comment on this video, is this something you'd like to see? Do you like the idea of mind walking, uh, making your opponents be forced to do something, or is that something that like kind of pushes you away? I, I feel like that's really where it's gonna come into play. Like, is that you something you like? It's a, then it's gonna be a buy. And if it's something you don't like, then it's going to be a not by because that's really the most complex and like unique twist to this game. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to mind walking you next time.